Hi everybody! Long time no see. No, I have not fallen off the edge of the earth. Um, just been busy with life and work and stuff. Um, but I have uh, been starting to get my mojo back a little bit. Yay! And um, I guess it was last weekend. Um, I coffee dyed a boatload of papers and envelopes and merchandise bags and sheet music and things like that, you know, just to have things ready for um, when I do another journal again. And I started thinking um, about, um, I don't know how to phrase it, started thinking about getting images into my journals without adding extra bulk, if that makes sense. And also without necessarily having the bright colors of something, you know, fresh off the printer. Um, so I decided to play with my citrus off. Um, a few years ago I did videos on transferring images with citrus off onto like fabrics and um, I've done it on furniture pieces. It's just really amazing stuff and I do clean my kitchen with it too. And I'll show it to you in just a second. <coughs> so I um, decided to play a little bit just to test it and I took one of my coffee dyed papers and I printed one of my images and well a couple images and because it did have text in it I did print it I flipped it for mirror image um, so that the print text would come out properly once the transfer would, was done um, but I really love how this ended up being yeah muted tones not bright this is this is the original print and you can see it, it is kind of bright and this was transferring it onto one of my coffee dyed papers and um, the images came out really well but it's not perfect perfect crisp like the printout is which I love that it's not that way because it just adds to that more vintage feel and I added another graphic on top of it um, so this is going to be a great way to actually um, collage into um, you know, pieces for your journal or even directly into your journal without adding extra bulk. Um, getting images on your journal covers. We're going to try several things today you know, just to see if it works for, for things that you would do with your journals. Um, so one thing, um, I actually did this um, on top of a sale flyer that had come in the mail and a little bit of it bled through <laughs> so I, I've got that to contend with it could be interesting or I could just do something over on top of that but this is really good too if you like the collage effect but you don't have Photoshop um, you don't want to spend the money on it which I don't blame you because it's not cheap um, you don't have the time to learn Photoshop or, or any of the um, graphics programs that would let you do collage type things you can create it if you have either a laser printer or access to where you can make copies on a printer that uses um, dry toner rather than ink this will not work with inkjet prints um, you're just going to make a just a horrible mess <laughs> if, if you use inkjet. Um, so um, I guess I'm just going to get to it. Um, I did pre-print out um, some images and we're just going to try it on a few different things and all the images that I'm using you, um, you know, are, are ones that you can find in my shop if, if you're interested in them but this is more about just getting this uh, showing you how to do this and I know I've shown you the citrus all process before but this is a whole new use for it and I just think it's so cool so I'm going to use her and the supplies that you're going to need this is the citrus all and I order it from um, soap.com uh, they do have the best price on it that I've been able to find. Um, I believe you can get it. You know, honestly, I don't know. I've never looked on Amazon to see if you can get it there or not. But for some of those who are 
uh, possibly in Canada. It might be that might be a, a place to check. Um, and I know I know you can get it if you're in the UK. Um, and there's probably information on that either in the comments or in the description box um, from my video a few years ago on how, how to use the scissor saw. And of course you can email them directly or go on their website and contact them. Super, super nice people that own this company. Um, and if, if you can't find it, then I'm sure they will be happy to help you find the resources to obtain it. So many uses for this stuff. And it smells good, too. <laughs> um, so you'll need the citrus off, obviously. Um, you'll need some painter's tape, a foam brush, a little bowl, and a spoon or a bone folder or something that you're going to burnish it with. And going from paper to paper, it doesn't take much, yeah, as far as pressure to get this down. Um, so I'm just going to tape, tape it on one side because I'm going to want to be able to lift it and I actually want to have it lifted while I'm brushing this on so that it doesn't immediately bleed through and go onto the paper and possibly make a mess. And I do have a couple paper towels here too. There we go. And I've got some wax paper down here too just to protect my table. Okay, so I'm going to hold it up. And I'm dipping this in and I'm squeezing some of the excess out along the, the rim of the bowl. Because like I said, it does not take a lot. You basically just want to get it wet over the image part. And I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. You know, I see a little bit of puddling. So I want that to be gone before I actually put that down onto the paper. Just grab a paper towel and just blot that a little bit. Speed up, speed up this process a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to gently place it down and I'm going to burnish it. And I'm not pressing hard. And if I find I have to press a little bit harder, I will. Oh, I missed a tiny bit of hand. See, and that's why I don't want to do it directly. Should have lifted it. Because it, it did bleed a little bit. Okay, let's lift it and check it. Okay, so I didn't quite get everything with her face. creating your own giant rub-ons, which is, <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. And I've always loved rub-ons myself. Okay, and I could leave it like that for, for a very, you know, organic type image. Or I can go back and I can burnish, press down a little bit harder. Grab some more details from this. Look how awesome that is. I just I, I love this stuff. And you want to Gently peel off your painter's tape. Set that down. And then one thing I'm going to show you, actually it really didn't do it. There's only a spot here 
where I did that. Oop, oh, okay, well, it's going to dry, so no biggie. <laughs> but you'll see it can bleed through the paper. So you will want that to completely dry. And when it does, you're going to, you're still going to be able to write on it. Um, yeah, or do whatever you want to do. Until that dries, though, you won't be able to do, you won't be able to do a whole lot. I would suggest you just let it dry completely before you even think about doing anything on the flip side. Um, so th that's on the coffee stain paper, or the coffee dyed paper, and I just, oh gosh, I love it! <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to set that side aside to dry. Um, if you don't want to, put an envelope through your printer. And this is the kind that has the self-stick or the peel and stick closure. I don't necessarily want to put that through my printer. Um, so I'm just sticking in a piece of chipboard just so it doesn't soak all the way through. Give it a little body. And I'm just going to take part of this image. Let's see. Let's, that. Let's do this size. And again, that's uh, reverse printed. This a little too short. Happens to be the, the proper width, so that's pretty good. Okay, and it looks like I'm going to have to, because I didn't leave myself any excess. And let me do this upside down so, so we can play along together. And I don't know exactly how this is lining up or where it's lining up, but we're just playing. I'm going to do that right there so I can lift it and not, um, not lose any of the image on the, uh, on the front face of the envelope. Okay, so again, I'm dipping it in. I'm getting off some of the excess, and I'm just brushing across the top of the paper. So I can see the image. And I'm going to blot some of that off in the interest of time. Okay. I'm going to lay that back down. And I'm applying hardly any pressure because like I said I can always go back and apply more pressure if I want more detail or I might just be satisfied with what I get just from doing this. Okay so let's see. I think it was probably too wet but Let's just keep going. So that's why I like to you know, do these little trial things on camera so if something happens you can, you can see it because, you know, obviously I'm not going to do do it first time out perfect every time. And you might end up running into the same things and just say, okay, well, you know, we, we can get around that. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting around it. So that's coming through, and yeah, it's a really good thing I have that chipboard in there because that would this would have gone straight through to the back side. And I'm just gonna do a little bit more. Okay. 
And I think I'm good with that. And you know what? I think it's uh, part of it, it might be because it's a security envelope too. But there is that. Not perfect, which I love. Not super bright, which I also love. I'm going to set that aside, set that aside to dry. And let's see. Okay, this is a piece of craft text that a lot of people use to make their journal covers. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. And I think I want a little bit of a darker image on this. Just do these three ladies. I'm not. I'm not going to dip it this time, Let's, because uh, there's probably still some, yep, there's still a good amount on there. So like I said, it doesn't take much. Okay, so you can see the images come through. Helping it along a little bit here, getting off the excess. Okay, let's. Wait, I don't see any reason why this won't work on the craft text since it's since there are paper fibers in it. Yeah, because a lot of times you Mod Podge images on top of the craft text and you might not necessarily get the edges down completely and it's kind of hard to go back and you know get glue in or you might have bubbles in what you've put on it. So this could be a great alternative. And this happens to be the, um, the stone color craft text. I mean, they have a craft color also and I think another color. Yep. Looks good. Now it didn't get the text. Let me see if I can. Even though it's super, super tiny. Not like I'd ever be able to read it. Okay. So there it is on craft text. And then you could do another image on here or a border or something and you know, just um, you know, bits and pieces of cutouts and create a, you can create a gorgeous collage for your cover using this. Put that one over there. Okay, and next I'm going to try it on a manila file folder since, since that is a big thing, you know, using the file folders for uh, to make junk journals. And this is my French perfume image, and I'm not going to do a I'm not going to do a huge piece.
Okay, sorry about that. My uh, memory card was full. I had to go delete some things. Um, okay, so we're going to uh, do this image on a manila file, your file folder. And I'm just going to tuck this little mat inside just to protect the reverse side. Lift it up. Again, I'm not dipping it in yet because I probably, yeah, I will have to dip it. Well, maybe not. Let's see the image coming through. Again, I don't know why this won't work, but it's good to see what the results are on um, different surfaces. And then you'll know what you do or don't necessarily want to play with when you uh, have a go at this. I'm not using the edge yet. like that if I wanted to. Turn I'm just going along. Give it another rub all the way across. Whoop, yeah, took some right there with it. See this part was a little too wet still so it did get a little bit muddy. But file folder. And you know what? Just for kicks. Let's just slot this down here and see if we can get some more out of it. Because you don't know until you try, right? And that would be very cool if, while it's still wet, if you can get a couple of prints out of it. A lighter version. So if that's what you want, then maybe you know do it on a piece of scrap something first, and then come back and do a second impression for the uh, for the more imperfect and lighter imaging. So pretty cool. Okay, so there's that, and I've got a manila envelope and a piece of sheet music, and then, yeah, I'll do those two real quick and then just kind of leave it at that. Let's see what this fit inside here. It does! Yay! do part of this and then something else on top of that just for the um, so you can see you can do layer upon layer and I don't necessarily want to do this whole thing a little bit 
later. I guess I should do it this way because this is kind of this is more like how it would be if you're doing it for a journal cover. I didn't dip again because the foam brush still had a good amount in it. Blot it on this paper towel a little bit too. Come on. Now it's going down. It is what it is. And that should dry okay. We'll find out. Might and you know, might not dry immediately. It might take overnight for it to uh, dry properly where you don't see it. quickly. Hard to tell a little bit because it because it's wet. I mean it's the image is there. I don't have my heat gun down here to uh, speed it along. But you can see that it did transfer through. And now I'm going to put this image on top. Just so that you can see that the, the layering is possible. getting that excess off. Okay, so that that's a very faded and perfect version and that might be exactly what you want. I'm going to go over it just a little bit more. I want it a little bit sharper, but I don't want it perfect. I don't want it as crisp as the original necessarily. If I did, I would just be rubbing harder through the whole thing. So there you have two layers of Citrusol transfers. So you can, you could create like an awesome collage effect on your journal covers without having to worry about your edges coming up because Mod Podge might not have, you know, hit all the edges. You're not going to have to worry about bubbles. Um, you get a more organic feel to the image instead of, instead of something like perfectly crisp and bright. Now I'm not sure how that's going to dry. Or how long it'll take. Yeah, on, on some materials, it might leave um, might leave some kind of stain uh, because there is a, there's citrus oil in here. Um, I know on the actual on the coffee dyed paper, it did dry yeah you know, overnight, so not a problem there. And it looks like this one is, yeah, this one is already dry where it had gone over.
The envelope is drying nicely. I like that. So yeah, where we had that extra drop where it came through on this, that's already dry and you can't even see the evidence of it. Okay, and then just uh, sheet music real quick. I'm just going to do uh, just a small one, just so we can see how it takes it. Or this is a, this is from um, a printed music book. But we all like our music pages because they do add something for sure. To begin, I mean, this is evidence too of how little of the stuff you actually need of the uh, citrusol because you don't have to dip your brush every single time. So I'm having a lot of fun with this and I think you will too if you have a go at it and it's a it's going to be a really great way to get things into your journals without adding extra bulk yeah you know, whether it be an art journal or a junk journal or yeah any type of journal okay so it might not have been the best image choice but and there it is. It's on there. I think I'll go a little bit harder. Get a little bit brighter on there. Okay, there you go. So I hope uh, hope you'll have a go at it. Um, yeah, I can see myself using this a lot. Yeah, I mean, I already use this. This is pretty much my go-to image transfer um, thing. But doing it on, um, you know, from paper to paper. Yeah, I do have Photoshop, so yes, I can go ahead and do all the collage things, but some things would be oversized for my printer. Um, I'm obviously not going to put a manila file folder or plasma envelope through my printer. I don't necessarily want to put an envelope, you know, that has the... Um, has the peel strip on it. Where did it go? I am so good for being able to lose things right in plain sight. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, with that glued edge, I don't necessarily want to put that through my printer, but I can still get images on it. Um, and yeah, I mean, yes, I could have glued the image down on here. Yes, I could have glued it on here. I could have glued it on these, but it's just it's just going to add extra bulk. So I think this is going to be. I think I'm going to be using this a pretty good amount. So okay, terrific. Well, thank you so much for joining and playing along today. And um, not sure what I'll be into next, but. Uh, you know I'll be here when I decide what it's going to be. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate your comments. Um, I know I haven't been very good at, at replying back to comments lately. It's just, you know, unfortunately, it's just, you know, you, ha you have to pick your battles of what you're going to get accomplished. But I do read them all, and I sincerely appreciate them all. And um, I will hopefully see you soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.